You can copy these methods and paste to the empty space for our player 2. We only need to change several variables inside. But you will notice that these two methods have the same structure very similar with each other. We can refactor our code and use only one function to achieve. We use one function passing parameters. We can first analyze these methods. In if statements, one of player move first will call this condition. Their current cards will be added to three random cards. In else statements, if the cards move seconds, he will receive four random cards. So we can create two parameters. First is the boolean type. The boolean parameter will represent which player move first or second. The second parameter is their current cards. His type should be the list game object. Passing parameter into a function can reuse a function, so we can replace this part with the parameter. When we call these methods, we can use detailed variables to call the methods. The console window looks messy. Oh, because we call the debug log twice, we can simply use the boolean type to represent our player name. Bend to Unity and press again. Now, our first player moved first and he receives three cards. In console window, our first player returned 2. Nice. We can start to deal with our car's display. Move to position manager script. Now, we need to make our enemy card position. So we have to declare another two transform array and change their names. Since we have changed our names of player 1 transform, there are several red lines underscore. But first, let's look at here. These cards refer to our current cards in our player. This place should be our current player 1 cards or player 2 cards. We can try to copy one of them and paste to here, but it's definitely useless because we did not get his references. We cannot get access these variables from other script. The common solution is to make one singleton pattern to figure it out. The singleton pattern is a way to ensure a class has only one single global accessible instance available at all times, behaving much like a regular static class but with some advantages. This is very useful for making global manager type classes that hold global variables and functions that many other classes need to access. We want only have one game object in our project, even when we make things transitions. Now we can get access any public variables from game manager script. Write game manager dot instance dot player one cards because we set our player one cards type as list we need to use count to represent our list maximum count instead of using length this is not an array let's first copy and paste the player one even and add transition to the right places first let's make our player one can work 
bind to Unity and drag each transform game objects to their places. We will notice that when our player 1 moves first, we will receive 3 cards in the bottom area. If we move second, we will receive 4 different cards. Cool. But we have one error. Let's see. Oh, the reason is that here. We already declare all of the cars game objects in game manager script. Actually, we can get rid of the cars variables in position manager now. Let's first change the cars to game manager dot instance dot player one cars dot count. Test again. Cool, there is no error now. The next step is to build our enemy card display. You can copy our display card and change several parts, but we have said before, we can use function passing parameter. Parameters always allows us to pass information or instructions into functions We can create three parameters. One is represent our player current cards. We use a list. The second is our art transform array. The third is our event transform array. Then we can change several information inside the methods. Check again. Make sure each variable has been replaced with our parameters. Then call these methods. Don't forget to use singleton pattern to call our player current cards public variables. Then press play. If we move first, we can get three cards. If we move second, our enemy will receive three cards. Cool. But we ignore one potential issue. It doesn't matter in this case, but when I record this tutorial, I noticed that we have to be aware of the execution order of these two function events. The reason is that all of methods have been called when we press the play button. Imagine we did not have these awake methods now, which script will execute first. We know that these two scripts has connected with each other. Our position manager script has to access several information from game manager script. In other words, if position manager script is queued earlier than game manager script, we cannot get access any public variables because game manager is for sleep. We can go to project settings and set up the Unity execution order. We can try to drag and change their execution order. Although it looks like the same as our previous result, imagine if we have more than 10 scripts. Using execution order will be easy to control your game. Actually, when I finish this tutorial and continue to the next project, I found another issue I ignore. It. Do you find something weird in our game? If you did not find some errors, try to go back and to check when every time we press play. You will find something very weird. The reason we ignore this issue may be I use several similar cards in this project. When I changed the card's image, I found one issue. If you didn't find these issues, pause the video and try to find it. Yes, although we have 10 cards in this game, I always display the fixed cards in our game and never change. The reason is that each time when we instantiate one new card, 
we use the I as the index of our collection. Each time we will receive our first three or first four cards from our cards array, we should get our random cards instead of the fixed cards. That's what one huge error we made it. We can create one local variable to store the random number from the zero to our cards maximum number. Write game manager dot instance dot cards dot length. Bend to Unity and try again. Perfect. Now we can choose two different cards to check on the initial interface stage. Let's fix our final error. When we press play, our display card is not match our current card's array from each player. We put the integer type random number inside each for loop. Because if we declare these variables outside, when we call these methods, no matter how many times for loop, the random number only has returned the same result. If we put the random number inside the loop, each loop, the random number will change randomly. Press again. Now we have different cards in our cards array. But our display cards are not matched with our current cards array cards. The reason is that inside the position manager script, the random number should be the player cards dot length instead of using cards dot length. Cards represent all of our cards in this game. We want to get our player own cards. Also, the instantiate number should be the player cards list instead of the cards. This is the reason why our cards display are not matched with our current array. Because we instantiate random cards from the cards instead of our own cards array. Alright, this is the end of this video. In the next episode, we will continue to finish our July to-do list mission and talk about how to save and load data in the game. We will talk about the player pref, JSON, binary, and XML. This series will be based on one simple shooting game. Hopes one of my videos can inspire you a lot. If you want to watch more videos, you can click my profile and subscribe to my channel. I appreciate it. Alright, see you in the next time.